when you look at uh, the current pay of uh, bankers, you might think that they are living on another, another world, another planet. The banking uh, uh, industry is based on uh, actually um, uh, trading on the risk. And somehow you have to attract good people and to give them the right incentive to perform and to take on the right type of risk that are rewarded for the firm, the bank, the shareholders, and of course for the banker. So banker bonuses uh, has always been something very important in the banking industry, not only in the UK, but you know, all over the world. So banker bonuses are not a new topic at all. I think that people become much more sensitive um, since a few years, uh, since we, we, we have been into this current crisis. But the, the issue has been the same for a long time. The average uh, employees at the Royal Bank of Scotland uh, earn some, some, something like £34,000 per year, which is a reasonable number, comparable to the average uh, uh, worker in the uh, public sector. There, there, there is no shock on that. But when you look at the top pit banker at uh, the very Ro uh, Royal Bank of Scotland, he, he earned £5.5 .5 million pounds, uh, in 2012. So the gap is uh, shocking. Uh, but, but somehow it is related to... Uh, on the other side, if you look at the nature of the banking business, it is, it is not a shock because it's related to the nature of the banking business, which is to take risk. So if you want to retain talent, if you want um, uh, those talented people to perform for the interests of shareholders and owners, you have somehow to pay them and reward them for the, the good performance. I think that the gap in terms of banker bonuses between uh, the UK bankers and other European counterpart was huge in the past. But it is not that huge anymore. I, I mean, the difference between uh, their pay. Somehow, uh, it is driven by a very uh, integrated and international labor market for top bankers. So the, the UK bank or any uh, European top banks don't have any choice but to, to offer a similar package to uh, talented people. So the, what I mean here is that the gap is not uh, that important. Between, between the UK and uh, uh, European counterpart. I think that the European Union uh, did not go, uh, go far enough in this uh, regulation. And the very reason is that, first, it is very difficult to get all the uh, member countries to, to agree on such an important issue. And secondly, uh, the banking uh, industry is a very complicated and special business and industry is not similar to any other industry. So, but, but the good sign here is that it is a good start. And I think based on that uh, good starting point, uh, maybe in the future European Union might provide for, uh, first further regulation, better regulation and maybe smarter regulations on the banking industry. Just to remind you about the two key points on that regulation. The first point is to cap uh, banker bonuses to 100% of the annual salary of the maximum or 200% of the annual salary if uh, shareholder uh, approve it in the majority and by a majority. And the second uh, point in this uh, regulation is to force uh, European banks to increase their reserve and to invest their own capital in uh, low uh, risky, lower uh, uh, type of uh, risky investment. Um, I, I think that this is a, this can be considered as a first step toward some uh, intelligent uh, regulation in in the banking industry in Europe. But it is it is not far enough, and you you, you see that it is already very difficult to get the twenty seven or twenty eight countries to agree on those two points. It has been a struggle uh, between. Uh, the UK on the one side and all the others member of uh, the European Union. So it is not far enough. Future regulation should go down into details of uh, many type of banking activities. So for example, what, we, what should we do with risky investment 
in the banking sector? What should we do with the commercial banking uh, activities, which uh, are considered as a, the, 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 the activities with the lowest level of risk? And we also have many uh, other uh, sub-sectors uh, sub in the banking sectors, like investment, uh, like uh, pensions. like So it is very complicated uh, to have a global uh, uh, regulations on uh, every corner of the banking industry. But I think, I think that the positive point is uh, on this regulation is that it is for the first time that we, we see kind of a consensus at the European level on uh, uh, you know, regulations um, for the banking sector.